What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Esther, and I have a guest today, and he is... Lima. Yeah. And today we'll be reacting to Ahmed Didat, Sheikh Ahmed Didat. And this is, the title says, The Difference Between the Bible and the Quran. In fact, someone requested for it just yesterday, and I said I'm going to do it again. So we are here doing this, doing the difference between the Bible and the Quran. Without no further ado, let's dive into the video. Yesterday you proved that the Bible was not the word of God. How could you now quote the Bible to predict the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Please explain. Yesterday was a debate. A format had been laid out. Originally it was 50 minutes, 60 minutes, and 10. Both sides had 60-60. But the format was, whoever speaks first has 10 minutes at the end. Because every advantage has a disadvantage. Yeah. So both speakers speak 60 minutes each. Now, with that format, you have no time to explain each and every position. So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say, this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts, I challenge you that there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just pick, took a pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say now it's the Word of God. But now the Word of God is in it, in the book. The Word of God is in the book. The Word of the Prophet is in the book. The Word of the Historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the Word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic? The same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up, a prophet, from among the brethren, from among the Bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed, is that from among your brethren, like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses, these are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. Yeah. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been, done all this last night. But this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving, and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. You see? 
Then there is the word of the prophet of God. Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking, the word of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus. Words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was, as if God speaking. Second was, as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian how does he speak? He says, in the Gospel of St. Mark, say, while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a ear witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember if you were there? I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first. Maybe he had no time. And somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter as a keel? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, so what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that, because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it, you know, in that pamphlet and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. You know, the speed, his pronunciation. He was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, so <laughs> There is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiancée if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is it. There's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There's the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type which we say pornography in the Bible. Now, we also have such a thing in Islam. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he's in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So he said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina, and they were housed in the Masjid the Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he offered the Masjid. 
to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. See, some of us, we are, you know, we think our masjids are superior to the masjid that our, that our Nabi had. No doubt, in construction, yes. He allowed them, but gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. He said, all right, now tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Filawhim Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that, then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad pressed buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, huwallahu ahad. He is Allah, the one and only. Allah, who summer, God, the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. It doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, what is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, what is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth. From fi lawham mahfuz, from the preserved tablet, from the head computer. See, he's in contact, he's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Ya Baritala is communicating. What shall I say? He says, say, who Allahu ahad. Now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran, you open Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112. We start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul huwallahu ahad. Say is Allah the one and only. Allahu samad. God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was. What was the occasion? What, how did it come about? Nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else, where the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened. People who were eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening. What our Nabi said, what happened. All that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith. Words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rush, Ibn Taymiyyah. Great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate books. <laughs> yes? <laughs> you know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, somehow, light-heartedness, <laughs> jokes, filthy, dirty stories. You stole around the campfire, right? They're written now in books. Fitzgerald, he translated it, The Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. I read it and I enjoyed it very much. Was a young boy. Ooh, I loved it, you know. <laughs> the unexpurgated editions. But it's separate. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the works of the sayings of the prophet. It's not in the works of a historian. Separate book. So we have the words of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. They have it all in one volume. <laughs> what I see is that if we are taking the first um, verse, um, the first um, phrase of this title, it says the difference between the Quran and the Bible. Surely. There's surely a difference between the two. They are not the same. 
So I will take that and but that the um the last part of it, which is the Bible is not the word of God and the Quran is the word of God. So I would like him to talk about that. Well, <clears throat> guys, thank you for of course listening and engaging with the content. I've been seeing some amazing uh comments from some of our guys, uh, which shows we are actually ready to, of course, engage on that truth level. So firstly, let me say some things so that you guys, to, I'm sure you're going to make your own uh, contribution. First, we believe that God exists, like everybody. Secondly, we believe Jesus exists. And Jesus believed the Old Testament. That is the first thing. So if Jesus believed the Old Testament, then I don't have option than to also believe the Old Testament. So for Amir did that, he also said he believed in Jesus. So if you really believe in Jesus and Jesus believed in the Old Testament, then I don't see any point in what is making that the Bible as like the words of God, the words of the historian, uh, pornography, the prophet, uh, the, the word prophet. of the prophet, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make any difference because if we believe in Christ and we believe Jesus is the messenger of Allah, Jesus was sent, and Jesus himself believe in that Old Testament, then <laughs> who are you not to believe in it? There's no point in you segregating that, okay, the Bible has the word of God, he has, the, he has that, he has that, he has that. That is the first point I'm going to make. And if you look at the book of John, John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus told the Jews that, okay, you search the scripture because you believe that you have eternal life in them. And I say that they are of which testified of me. And of course, the entire scripture testify of Christ. And when we may testify, he testify both the divinity and the humanity of Christ. Okay. So when you write the word of God, when you write the word of God, when the word of God is presented and you try to uh, remove the divinity, then it's not totally the word of God. It must contain both the divinity and the humanity of Christ, which is expressed in the different type of people, the prophet, the laws, uh, the Psalms, which compose the Old Bible. Testament. So let me come to some of the points that I mentioned. When you were saying that, okay, the, way, uh, the Bible has those five departments, those five compartments. Of course, I think, and that was what the person that has the question was trying to say that you are making argument from the scripture that Muhammad was prophesied in the scripture. However, you are still saying the Bible is it, not the is, word of God. The, so you see that the only point now, from what he said, he only quoted two uh, verses. verses. I don't know, maybe he has quoted some in other places, but from this video, he only quoted two verses, which is uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 and Isaiah. Uh, 45, 44. The thing I see here is he, from what he's saying, the position I am made to believe is he only believed the portion of the Bible that is using to support that supports his, his argument. argument as the word of God. That's the first thing. Because actually, if you read the book of Deuteronomy 18 that he quoted, you see that even that place. It's not talking about Muhammad in any way. The Bible says uh, Moses was talking to the people at that point in his life when he believed his time is almost over. He's saying that a prophet like me, with God raised among you, among your brothers, is very specific among the, bro among the Israelites, not outside. So how Muhammad now become an Israelite, I don't know, maybe there is an explanation for that. I'm sure that I've seen some explanation they are making that, okay, Ismail was a son of, uh, a son of Abraham. So that place is talking about that brother from Abraham. That is a person that God, no, this one is very special. Among the Israelites, among your brothers, 
So if you are saying that one is word of God and that's the only thing you are able to quote, then we know that you already have a weak argument from that point. And the same thing, the book of Isaiah, whatever is trying to talk about the uh, oneness of God alone, is also trying to make a position that, oh, Christ is not God. And that is why it's quoting the place. And that one is actually not true. It's not totally accurate. Because even Christ made that position known in uh, John 17, 30, and the Father are one. Is that one? It's just that like God said that I'm the only one. 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 Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one. One. It's the same one. But okay. Okay. Before you go ahead, there, there was a question about this from our last reaction someone says that um when jesus and god is one and jesus prayed i think is in matthew that um that i pray to my father that um is it myself and the disciples will be one as i and the father is one or you all are one as i and the father is one yeah that doesn't mean that all the disciples are god and we worship them too okay so this is a, this is the point so when jesus christ said that and the father are one i think i explained it that he's talking about the same essence the same nature the same being the being is that they carry the half like the same being the i mean the same being the same essence, the same nature that you find in the father is so what you are going to find it in the son true. so he's talking about that unity uh of divinity which is present within them so when he's saying that the disciple also should be one he's talking about the unity that is needed among them because Christ has prophesied, it's because they didn't read the entire thing that, okay, in some time, that persecution will arise. If they read that entire place, they will see it. <laughs> you'll be persecuted, and they are bound to be divisions among, among them. them. Of course, Judas, when he was saying that Judas has not betrayed him more, when he said that thing that they are saying, when he was praying that prayer, in the book of John chapter 17, Judas has not betrayed them. And when he's talking about one, he's praying that they, they will be one. And the third person of Trinity was actually the Holy Ghost, which was released, pour out on everyone so that they begin to have one act. It's, it's in the book of Art where you see that the disciple they did everything with what? With one accord, yes, in one it, accord, in yes. one accord is the one that it, it came to pass. But because people don't have time to read, to read it, the Bible and only it, take what they were being yes, told, yeah. So, is there the, the, the one is established in the book of God, they did everything with one accord. accord, they eat together, they do this together. That was all Christ was saying. So, he's saying that the unity between him. And the father cannot be broken. The essence is the same. The thing, uh, the nature is the same. The being is the same. It cannot be broken. And for that reason, they want that same thing among his disciples. And if you now read for that, it was achieved when he said that they were doing everything with one accord. Of course. Christ prophesied that false prophet will arise even in the earlier Christian uh, worldview. You see that the people that they call Antichrist are people that left Christianity and begin to do another thing mm. against Christ. And we have people we call the Gnostic. You, you can go and read about them. We have the Nocalitan, we have the Docetism. And these are Christian that left and begin to you know, make some uh, teachings. Some say that Christ didn't come in flesh. They only want to prove his divinity. And some say Christ is only flesh. They don't want to prove his uh, divinity. So, difference could begin to emerge. And Christ has foreseen that 
That's why a brother, brother, they may be one. one and you one. see that in early Christian, when they are called Christian and Nancy, he said they did everything in one accord. accord. A, that oneness is there. So that is what that place is talking about. So that about. is explained already. Um, so let me go back to what I made the that was saying that the Bible has history, he has the word of God, he has prophet. He has, so, uh, yeah, he has he has pornography. Yes. And why I, I explain Christ believed the Old Testament, so you don't have a point. Second, even the Quran itself, Quran, I think five thirty-four, five thirty-six was saying that the people of the gospel should judge by the revelation that Allah has given in the gospel. In the same thing, he's saying the people of the Torah should judge by the revelation that Allah has given. In the Torah, so even the Quran validates the gospel, it validates the Torah. So I don't know how it came to the conclusion that the Bible is this, is that, is that, is that. Of course, humans will always, uh, they will always have their own position. And the, I think the point I mean, and they've even explained, oh, the Quran is just saying that they should only believe the word of God that was in that place. You know, there are some Bibles that the word of Christ is, is written in red. So they are saying that it's only that red uh, words of Christ that is the word of God. I mean, people always find something to support their position. Whereas the Quran that you even call the word of God said it emphatically, let the people of the gospel judge by the revelation that was presented there let the people of the Torah judge by the revelation that was presented. And you are seeing that they are not correct, they are this, they are that, they contain this and that. Whereas even the Quran you are carrying is I emphasizing that let them judge. If it's not the word of God, it won't even say, it won't even say that. It won't even say that. So let me come to the manuscript because I think this is one of the points that some uh people who are not really uh, they don't have the understanding race that okay, we have 25,000 manuscripts, like what is said. So we have we are following 25,000 5, gospels. <laughs> you see, <laughs> it's like let me give you is like a court case, you are, in, you are in court, and you have many source of evidence. So you have 25,000 manuscripts, and manuscript, what do we mean by manuscript? Written word of uh, the author, which is usually written on parchment or papyrus. I think I've mentioned it somewhere else. So the manuscript are 25,000, let's say 25,000 or 24,000, depending on the sources quoting. The thing is, you are in the court cases, you want to make a uh, position. Mm -hmm. And you have 25,000 sources. What does that mean? It's even giving you more confidence in what you are presenting because you cannot validate any position in different, in different manuscripts. And that's the essence. And what he's saying, they are not identical. They are this. Across the manuscript, the content didn't change. The message that God exists, Jesus came to die, he resurrected. He didn't change. He's, he's, he's across all these manuscripts. So the point is making is actually not really as uh, strong. Like it doesn't have a point because the manuscript maintain the message of Christ. It maintain the message of the apostle and the gospel that is even talking about. It was referenced by the apostle in their earlier teachings. You will look at the epistle they quote the Old Testament. Paul rely heavily on the Old Testament. Peter same thing. John, same thing. They all quote the Old Testament. And if you are not true, they won't have quoted it. They won't mention it at all. Jesus also referenced the Old Testament. In Mark, he referenced it. John, he referenced it. He even said, yeah, God. That's referencing Psalms. He said all these things. And if the book were not true, they wouldn't have referenced it. And on the point of pornography that is mentioned, of course, the humanity needs to be presented. And I think he's talking about the cases of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. He's talking about Dinah that was 
you know, rape. He's talking about the children of uh, Noah that saw the nakedness of their father. I mean, those things are there because we are humans. Humans who have free will, free choices, of course, can do things. Deviate, and, just yeah, like other man did. They deviated. do anything, and that is captured for you to see that, oh, you are also human, and the Bible, Bible is written for your own admonition so that they set examples you can for learn. you, you can learn from me. But when the humanity is removed from the entire thing, then you don't, you can't even say that this is what is happening. And don't forget, before the Bible was written, the people have lived the life. They are living. They lived the life, and they now reported, they recorded the life. So it's not as if a book was written first before they begin to live. No. They leave, then they wrote. And another point I even we used to close because of our time is he said that okay, the Bible contained it in one single document. But he said the Islam, the Quran, he has the word of God separate, he has the Adit separate, he has the word of prophet separate, we and have he have the uh, Arabian uh, Arab night time separate. Uh, the question I'm going to ask is what difference does it make as a whole or as a separate? You have it is there. You have it is there. That's what I'm so saying. Does it make any difference? It's like that was what I said in my last uh, um, reaction. I said the, what what I think about that is you hiding some set because now that some students or some children go to Arabic school, you only teach them about the Quran. You will never show them those for the prophets or for the ninth stand or this thing. It is until maybe they now later in the maybe they don't even come across. Some Muslims are very sure would not know that those books actually exist. So it's like you eat humanity away from them. You only want to show them to the prophets um, lined word of you know that's what I said in my last and some people were saying no there's nothing to hide seriously there is a lot to hide by doing that because if you say something is a manual we said the Quran is a manual you follow and we said the Bible is a manual you follow if you can't see somebody that has passed through this place okay God has gifted this person and this person fell due to what he did it's not like you will just hear it, okay, go and do this, go and do that. But you see the humanity in it, and it came to place, and you'll be able to learn from what has happened. I really, really love this, and that's why I said I'm going to react to this again with more knowledgeable person, and um, is going to open our eyes to this. I'm super excited, and I know you've learned one or two things. Drop your creative arguments convention words down there at the comment section please no hate speech and no aggressive or any kind of insultive word i beg so um we'll see you in some other video and we'll see you in another video signing out bye guys. ciao